I have one school that have been have taken positive looking to the extreme and they are determined to become a vision friendly school when I walk in there my, my heart bursts with pride to see everybody wearing black tabards carrying torches it's given them um it's given them the confidence to understand vision and it's inspired them to better understand vision a bit of looking sort of help not just the VI students it mm. helps the whole cohort within her class uh, when you go into schools you can see that vision understanding vision underpins the whole day yes. all the classrooms have changed Mass had a massive impact on on the calmness and the behavior and the attention of the student yeah. directly just helped everybody yeah, as part of an ethos really yes. with it throughout the school it starts to you see it happen in one classroom and it starts to unravel throughout the school because they see the benefits in that one classroom it benefits all the children it's really about using positive looking as a way of upskilling our schools and that knowledge in the schools because discussion recently <clears throat> around how we support special schools mm. and how more how much more effective it is if they take ownership of what they are doing and they have that understanding rather than us popping in assessing a child and then writing a report and disappearing. Um, I, I think the staff that have come from the schools to be trained have found that they've had a better understanding of the visual impairment mm -hmm. and that it doesn't have to be something that's just done as a once a week slot in the dark room. And it's a skill, the visual programme can be built into what they're doing all the time. The schools, the schools are more aware of it, aware of vision and how important it is. Um, and they're all working towards developing the pupils' visual skills within, uh, within the curriculum that they, that they produce. It's really important because we, we had vision time, I suppose, in a special school. We'd take a child out and you'd have the time for looking. And if you think about it, like if you had a child who was using Braille, you wouldn't say, oh, the lady's here, you can go and do your Braille for yeah. one hour a day. It needs yeah. to be all the time, doesn't it? I mean, that makes no sense saying a child can use Braille or do something for an hour a day. And even if, if you're exercising any sort of muscle, it needs to be done all the time, doesn't it? So I, I think we start with the why. And then if you understand why you're doing things and you get everyone else on board, and as you said, Gwyn, vision's everyone's business. If you get that in place, then everything else starts to line up. So the how you do it and what you do. And what, we, what we've been trying to do over that period is to find something that we can use, again, like I was saying before, to make sure everyone's speaking the same language. And um, by embedding positive looking in, in a, a certain special school class, we've seen lots of positive outcomes. So, but to see things like that becoming normal or someone putting some black gloves on, yeah, to do that without prompting is really lovely. Saying about shifting that why, if I, three years ago, I would have been telling them to do all this. But quite often when I go into a school now, because we're all, like I said, we're all speaking the same language, they've done lots of things and they tell me about all the things that they've done because they understand why we're doing it. But it's a similar sort of thing. Yeah. If, you, if a school understands the why, mm -hmm. then, and which comes from the positive looking approach, then everything else falls into place. They, they understand and they do it, do it themselves. Um, I really feel like that it goes beyond an individual approach and it makes it a whole group approach. Mm -hmm. So we go beyond just that vision teacher just having that knowledge to everyone having that knowledge, yeah. which is fantastic. So I feel like our kiddos, our students, our vision kiddos, um, and all disabilities really, are getting to be able to be more involved in lessons that's still helping them increase those visual skills and working um, toward other progressions and helps everyone. Um, just skills in general, story time um, helps all comprehension. There are so many skills besides vision that it plays on and builds on. So just from the initial, honestly, first session of looking at this program, I have been super excited just to start implementing. Nice. This is completely different, but it's even got me more outside my approach on CVI assessments. When I go in and assess these kiddos, I'm using different materials, um, making materials. Um, and so, like I said, it got me thinking outside the box, just in general as a whole. Actually going to be something that 
teachers could use. I could see it being used with students and not only visually impaired students. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the things I'm looking forward to see a ripple effect is as this is and get, you know, it's used in a classroom, mm -hmm. you know, the other students may become more engaged. Um, they have vision, they have hearing, but they have other disabilities, but just the same practices. Um, I don't know, it's just something I'm, I just think that it's gonna carry over to other students in the class. One of the biggest things for me is getting my teachers to really understand and buy into vision. When you said vision as a top agenda, unfortunately, you know, it's so much that we're on the bottom. Mm. Nobody thinks about it. Mm. They, I would love for, and not just for our vision, for a lot of students, but for them to think about the vision or the visual activities, that's first mm. before you can combine everything else. Mm. So that's what my overall goal is for it not just to help my vision students, but to help everybody. That, um, and it makes us stronger as a team. Mm -hmm. I'm not just, oh, well, there comes the vision teacher. So it's no longer, or, oh, I didn't know we had a vision teacher. Oh, I didn't know. It would be wonderful. And to be able to give, you know, all our ECE teacher, our special ed teachers, you know, and say, here is things that you can use in a classroom, no matter what the disability. Here's a program that I can give you that you can use components of. We're a large district, so I hope we can make a change in our entire district.